I'm just gonna look. Sweetheart! Good, really good. Can I see? Thank you for helping. There you go. All that work <laughs> for that. Hi, good girl. Truffles aren't something that you eat, they're something that you experience. It's all about aroma. When you use them in cuisine, you add them as a way to enhance what you're eating. They make everything that you add them to in terms of a dish more complex, more ethereal, more, um, more wonderful. Yeah, good girl. Yeah, good girl. I think I'm right in saying they are the most valuable food stuff. I don't know the going price of gold right now, but you know, it might be comparable. The general rule is the more terrible it is outside, the better the truffle hunting. Cold, miserable, wet, snow is fine. You know, the driving rain is my least favorite. So we are in a primarily dug fir forest, uh, second growth. So uh, replanted. The, the, Certain species of truffles tend to like kind of like the tree farms, so where people plant Douglas fir for timber purposes. My first truffle hunting experience was in the Marche region of Italy, which is like Tuscany, but without all the tourists. And it involved this tartufio, which is what the guy is called, who's the, the dog handler. And the dog, who was a Legotto Romagnolo named Toby. I saw the handler and the dog working together and they had a great relationship. And it just, it's like a, a switch flipped and I was hooked. Good girl, good girl. Okay. Slow down, hon. The industry existed in Oregon and we have the same habitat basically, you know, as Oregon, same soils, a lot of the same stuff. And so I was like, if they're there, they're here. There were maybe two people in like the entire state who were kind of doing it at all. And so, I basically just started approaching timber companies and asking them. And they were like, oh, fascinating. Okay, cool. Yeah, sure, come check. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. Good girl. Yeah, it's a tiny white. Look at that. Thank you. So every species of truffle has a different value too. So like the European species tend to be more expensive than our native ones. Uh, the Italian white truffle kind of being the pinnacle of that. We're not getting rich doing this. It's not particularly lucrative. So they're valuable, but the amount of time and effort we put into this is astronomical. So we do it because we love it. We are headed up into the woods. There's a stand of trees. We haven't been to it yet. That's a deeper forest. Um, there's a very muddy road ahead of us. It's a little bit off-roading. This will be fun, actually. I like doing this. Yeah. Please don't get stuck. No one dog is going to necessarily be better at truffle hunting inherently than any other dog. It's not breed specific. It's personality based. Callie is a border collie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kristen is my business partner at Truffle Dog Company. You know, we complement each other's strengths. Did you find something? Callie loves finding whites. We often refer to her as the great white truffle dog. Good girl. Yeah, that's a nice big one too. That's super. The Oregon whites tend to like more exposed habitats. The blacks are more likely to be found in the deeper forests. Hi, can I? Okay, let's not eat the rest. Good girl, thank you. So it's a complete fallacy that dogs will not eat them. Some do. Lolo has come a long way. She used to eat a bunch. Um, uh, just of the blacks. She never has eaten a white. She just, I think, frankly, she likes fruit actually. And they kind of have a fruit odor. So it's just, she picked it up probably and put it in her mouth. And so it fractured. Okay. Yeah. See how she slows down? It's a partnership with you and the dog that you're both working towards a common goal. You're out there and you're just 100% focused on your dog, nothing else. Is there something there? Say a dog's alert is to scratch the ground to tell you, oh, there's a truffle here. We need to know exactly where in this area the truffle is. So the dog gets down on the ground and ideally will nose target and try to tell you where the truffle is in the soil. So after that happens, you search in the soil yourself. 
It's not just the dog going out and finding the truffle, it's a lot about the handler. There it is! Hooray! What a good boy! Good, 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 good! They're so smart. We reward, we share a connection with them, and then we ask them to go find another one. Good boy, buddy. Ready? Travarlo. Which way is that? You want to take a break? Hooray! Good boy! That'll do! You did awesome! You did super awesome. That's his cue that he's finished. He doesn't have to hunt anymore. Just like humans get burnt out at any job, the dogs will get burnt out too. And if you watch any like bomb detection dogs, they'll work in 15 minute shifts. Good girl. Okay, calm, calm down, calm, calm down. There are areas in Washington and Oregon where the truffle economy is fueled by drugs. Often it's meth. You know, somebody who's on meth is just gonna go out and just rake like crazy. When we talk about raking, we talk about people ripping up the forest floor and just leaving it massively exposed. And that is really sad to see. It kind of just breaks your heart when you see it because whole hillsides are just destroyed. Whereas when we use the dogs, much lower footprint. You know, it, it ideally, you don't know that we've been there. When you rake for truffles, you will find a bunch usually, but most of them are not ripe. And you can't really ripen them. So that's why Oregon truffles and native truffles in the Pacific Northwest have a bad reputation in general and are less valuable is because for a long time, chefs were only given stuff that was like mixed quality and wasn't ripe. We need to teach chefs about it just because the quality is so much better because we're using dogs. So that's what we found today. Need to clean them, obviously. So running water. And you don't want hot, because you don't want to get rid of the volatiles. All those awesome aromas and stuff, those are the volatile compounds. I get very sciency with it. So then literally, you just take your toothbrush and you just get in there. I always clean truffles with beer, by the way, because this can take a while. So I might as well have fun. You just brush and see all of that just comes away. That's a really nice one. You want to blot them. You don't want to like leave moisture on them. Frost damage on the top, perfectly fine on the bottom. Marbling's good, marbling's good. This is one that you would want to buy and that we would sell to chefs. This is a frost damaged one right there. That needs to all be cut off. Try to remove as little material as possible, but see that? See, now you start to see some marbling. Oops, better. That's now sellable. So we're in downtown Seattle. I come down for deliveries at least once a week, if not a couple times a week. It's a nightmare, it's simply because it eats a lot of time every time you do come into the city, because you're stuck in traffic for a really long time. And that's time we're not out harvesting. A pound wholesale to a chef would be probably about $400 a pound. So we are meeting Preston here. He acts as a distributor for us around town. He sells to a lot of restaurants in around town. So I'm supposed to be meeting somebody else already right now too. I'm just gonna tell her traffic is bad. Hello, sir. Do you want to do it in your car? You just want to do it here? What do you want to do? Um, probably be better in, the, in my okay. office. So, here's the stuff from this morning. You're welcome to whatever you want. Okay. And like I said, we can get you more because like they're out right now finding more. But, um, you know. No, that's, that's fine. I'd rather have a little bit of something fresh. Right. That's what I mean, yeah, I don't want to be sitting on it for, yeah, a, you, you know, because you, you want the want fresh. Right. right. So, you know, I try to bring him only the best quality stuff that we have. And usually those are whole truffles and not pieces. We've developed a good relationship with Preston and he gets us in all kinds of places. If you're finding native truffles on restaurants in Seattle, they're most likely ours. Thank you. Just have a good day. Okay. I couldn't sell this chunk, so we figured we'd turn it into ice cream. I grated a bunch of Oregon black truffles, and you just let it infuse overnight into the milk and cream, and you can turn it into whatever you want. It's going to smell like black truffle. And it does, and it's like a, it's like a cool, sweet aroma. So what's in here right now? Chocolate, vanilla, a little bit of cream, mostly milk, a little bit of sugar, not a lot, because the truffles are actually so sweet naturally, you don't need it. And Oregon black truffles, and that's it. The flavors go really well. The Oregon black truffles have like a chocolate aroma to them sometimes, along with the floral fruitiness. So it works really well in desserts. Whereas the Oregon whites work really well kind of in more main dish kind of things, um, because they're a little more savory. So we are making a quiche. 
This is a family recipe actually that I just then doctored, basically by adding truffles to it. So in here is a eggs that have been infused actually with Italian white truffle, because it's what I had at the time. Um, some organ white truffle, which we just found a couple hours ago. Uh, Emmentaler cheese, some bacon, and uh, milk and cream and some spices. We've been infusing the eggs with white truffle for a while. So you basically take a container um, with eggs and you put the truffles in there. The odors bind with fats and the whites, sometimes you put them in for eight hours and the stuff is potent. So you have to be careful with the whites. They're really, really potent. You need to keep them in a sealed container because if you don't, they will truffle everything in your fridge. The presence of truffles is really what's so great about them. It's the aroma. You're not gonna just grab a truffle and bite into it. The aromas associated with truffles make food much more complex and they enhance. And that's what's so wonderful about them is you can take a dish and you add truffles to it and it becomes that much better. All right, so that's done. So we have Oregon black truffle ice cream. And it's really good. So it's really sweet. It's really good. They make everything that you add them to in terms of a dish more complex, more wonderful. It's no. a very, it's a very, it's um, a umami flavor. It's like you put it in your mouth and the truffle fume is already hitting the back of your throat and the base of your nose before you ever start chewing it. Uh, it's hard to describe. It's tasty is pretty much where I stopped. When you're out in the woods with your dog, it is a very zen-like experience. It's a little cliche to say, but it's you're very in the moment. Nice. There we go. It's not just about, oh, we're gonna go truffle hunting and oh, we're gonna find one and I'm gonna put it in my bag and we're gonna go on to the next and I'm gonna find it and move on. It's a relationship. I love being out in the woods with my dogs and I like foraging. It's a hunter-gatherer kind of thing and I really get a primal satisfaction out of that. Yeah.